This video is a quick review of how to graph linear equations such as these. Now remember, when you have an equation in the form y equals mx plus b, in the past we have learned that this m represents the slope and this b represents the y-intercept. All right, so when I look at this equation right here, I know that this is the slope and this is the y-intercept. So I'm going to use that information to help me graph the line. So um, I'm going to start with the y-intercept, negative 1. That means the line crosses the y-axis right here at negative 1. Now the slope. Since the slope is 2 over 3, I'm thinking rise over run. I'm thinking up 2 and right 3. So from the y-intercept, if I go up 2, right 3, that's going to give me another point on the line. And I can continue up 2, right 3. I could repeat this pattern to the left as well by going down to left 3, down to left 3, down to left 3, down to left 3. So now I have more than enough points to graph this line. So we will go ahead and interpolate, meaning imagine the points between the ones that we have. And let's put arrows on the end, and that's how you graph a linear equation, um, especially one that's already in slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. OK, let's look at a couple more versions of this. So again, here I have uh, my y-intercept is 1, which means it's going to cross the y-axis right here. And then I see this 3. Well, I want to look at it as 3 over 1, so I can see the rise and the run. Up 3, right 1. So that's going to be up 3, right 1. And I'm kind of out of space there. But in the other direction, it's down 3, left 1. So down 3, left 1, down 3, left 1. So these four points are enough for us to draw this line. OK, maybe use a ruler if you've got one. So your line can be a bit better than mine, even. All right, that's how we would graph number two. All right, let's look at this one. Um, the y-intercept is 3, so I'm definitely going to start at 3 on the y-axis. Now, here I have got this negative sign. Um, it, when you have a negative sign on a fraction, you have choices. Um, see how this negative sign is in the middle? It would be the same if it was on the bottom or if it was on the top. So in other words, you could take this negative sign and move it up or down. It doesn't matter. So um, I'm mentioning that because I like to think of the negative sign as being in the numerator whenever I do this. Um, so, when we do the slope, remember when we did the 2 over 3, we went up 2, right 3. And on this one, I went up 3, right 1. Now, what about this negative sign? Okay, um, instead of going up 1, because of the negative sign, I'm going to go down 1. But I'm still going to go right 2. So, the way I do it, I always end up going to the right because if there's a negative sign, I put it in the numerator. So I, I will either go up and to the right if it's positive, or I will go down and to the right if it's negative. But I always go to the right. Um, so here I go. So this is down 1, right 2. Down 1, right 2, down 1, right 2. And to the left, it's going up 1, left 2. So up 1, left 2, up 1, left 2, up 1, left 2. You know what? I think I'm going to cheat and use my technology to draw a perfect line. Shabam! Alright, there you go for number 3. Um, okay, number 4. The y-intercept here is this negative 2. So I'm going to start at negative 2 on the y-axis. 
Now I've got my negative 3 for the slope. You can look at that as negative 3 over 1. So that's down 3, right 1. Always go to the right. So down 3, right 1. I'm out of space, so now I'm going to go to the left by going up 3, left 1. Up 3, left 1. Up 3, left 1. And I'm out of space again. Four points are plenty. And I'm going to cheat again. Whoa, moved the wrong thing. All right, and there you go. All right, so that's how you would graph number four. Hmm, number five looks awful short. The thing that's missing is the y-intercept number. Well, it can only be missing if it is actually a zero. So that does, in fact, mean that the y-intercept is zero. So that's why I'm going to start at the origin. And again, I've got this negative sign. And again, I'm going to take it and I'm going to put it on the numerator. All right, because it's the same thing. So I'm going to take this negative sign and put it on the 3. So I'm going to go down 3, right 2. Notice how I always go to the right. So I'm going to go down 3, right 2. And I have space to do that again. So down 3, right 2. I can continue the pattern to the left by going up 3, left 2. Up 3, left 2. Up 3, left 2. All right, so that's how you would graph number five. Yeah. Um, okay, these little tiny guys, I'm going to graph both of these on one uh, grid, one coordinate plane. So look, first I'm going to graph y equals 4. The line y equals 4 is actually a horizontal line. I know that the y-axis is vertical, um, so you might be wondering why the line y equals 4 is horizontal. And to help you understand that, just make a quick table of values. Um, let's just do three points. So that, that'll be plenty. x, y. This equation only tells us one thing. It tells us that y equals 4. So that means no matter what the x value is doing, the y value is going to equal 4. So we can just make up some random x values. It doesn't matter. So for example, negative 2 comma 4, 1 comma 4, 3 comma 4. Now let's plot these points and see what they look like. Um, negative 2 comma 4, uh, 1 comma 4, and 3 comma 4. All right, so you can see that um, points that all have a y value of 4 are all going to be at this height. Um, just like these three randomly picked points are forming a horizontal line. If we did more and more points, they would all fall along the same line. So that's why it's going to be horizontal. Okay, because all the y values are here at a height of 4. Um, similarly, x equals 2 is going to be a vertical line. Because this is a line where all of the x values are negative 2. All right? And again, imagine that we had all of our x values are negative 2. So we could do negative 2, uh, comma, 3. Negative 2, comma, 1. Negative 2, comma, negative 5. I just made up random values. Um, negative 2, comma, 3, for example, would be here negative 2 comma 1 would be here and negative 2 comma negative 5 would be here notice how they're all lining up right here um, all of the points where the x values are negative 2 will all line up 2 to the left so that's going to form a vertical line Right, so if you're going to memorize it, you just have to memorize that's kind of backwards. Um, even though the x-axis is horizontal, 
the line x equals something is going to be vertical. Even though the y-axis is a vertical line, the equation y equals some number will give you a horizontal line at that number. Okay, um, I think that's it for the graphing. In the next video, I will show you how to write an equation when you're given the graph of a line. All right, so that's, uh, you can pick that up on the next video.